greetings. It's, it's a real honor for me to receive this award. I'm truly humbled. I've known about this distinguished uh, publication and, and I never imagined that I would get an award from you. So thank you so much. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Strive Masiwa. I am an African entrepreneur. I started my business when I was only 25 years old. And I trained as an engineer in the United Kingdom and returned to Africa, where I worked first in telecommunications and then decided that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Um, and my field is telecommunications. I was truly blessed that um, the revolution in telecommunications, which brought about mobile communications, happened uh, on my watch, as they might say. And I threw myself to ensuring that Africans got access to telecommunications. So I was very much part of that revolution that took place in Africa where today we have more than 800 million people in Africa have mobile phones, access, 400 million of whom have access to the internet using their phones, which is more than in Europe and America put together. And this was an entrepreneurial revolution led by entrepreneurs. Um, and I was really, um, the humble to be part of that. Obviously, as the technologies have um, advanced, so have our, have our own businesses. We started in a small country, uh, Zimbabwe, and then some 22 years ago, I left Zimbabwe and I moved to South Africa from where I based our business and began to expand it from there. Today, we operate in some 41 countries around the world, most of, most of them in Africa. But we are also in places like Israel, where we have some 900 employees. We have uh, operations in Latin America. We have operations here in the United Kingdom. Uh, we, our interests now expand into new fields of technology such as cloud computing, uh, cyber security, uh, fintech services. As a, at a very early stage in my entrepreneurial journey, I realized that as an entrepreneur, you must always be part of providing solutions within your community, which go beyond your profit motive. So my wife and I, some 25 years ago, established a foundation we call High Life Foundation, which is aimed at helping uh, children orphaned in those days by the HIV AIDS pandemic to get education. Uh, later on, we just made it a foundation for any child who uh, didn't have the means to go to school. I'm pleased to say that in the last 25 years, we have given scholarships to more than 250,000 young people who have been able to complete their education at different levels. Some have even gone as far as to study in the United States, in Britain. Uh, the last five years have been particularly good on our scholarship program in that we've had a Rhodes Scholar come out of our, from amongst our kids every year for the last five years. So we, 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 we're very pleased about the work we do in that, in that area. And of course, sometimes philanthropy isn't just about 
giving money. Most people think you've got to give money to be a philanthropist. Uh, but, you know, I sometimes make sure that as much as I am able to give money, I must also give the time, uh, particularly in times of crisis. So I was greatly um, honored to have spent the last two years working full time as Africa's uh, coordinator for its response to the pandemic, which I've just completed. Um, I'm now working on the food security crisis, uh, which has which has come as a result of the Russian um, invasion of Ukraine. So it's a it's an entrepreneur. You have to learn to walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm deeply honoured to partner with you through this award, and I hope that you have. A wonderful evening. Thank you very much and God bless you.